Hi everybody, so uh, let's look at use case 3.2, HTTP, HTTP driven Terraform script execution. Um, sounds like a mouthful, but it's actually a pretty simple workflow. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling a Terraform container and pass it a Terraform script for execution. So using directive API gateway, the response comes in, um, and we have a couple of query parameters set for this response. So init, plan, apply, and state. And based on those query parameters, we're instructing directive what to return to us. So the flow of this is we're first going to bypass the authentication plugin, um, and then we're going to use the request convert plugin to copy all of the headers of this request into the body of the workflow, because we want to use the query parameters in the workflow. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send it off to a target workflow. And this workflow takes the body object, which is uh, the, obviously the Terraform script. Um, it's stored as base64 because we received it as a post. And we're going to convert that base64 into um, uh, internal variable, which we're going to store in directive. And we're going to take that internal variable and create a file on the Terraform script. It all happens automatically in any case. We're going to execute this script uh, in the four phases, like in a, sorry, three phases, in a plan and apply, um, and then we're going to take the TF state that was created and store it back in directive as an output variable, and then based on what we send through, either in it plan, apply or state, um, we're going to filter out the objects that we don't need or, or the output that we don't need, and we're going to pass it back to the API gateway. This time to the JS outbound plugin. And this JS outbound plugin is going to do three simple things. If all four of them were selected, it's going to pass back the JSON object. If a plan, apply, or state was selected, we're going to convert the header into a text plane header because we want to see the text. Um, and if the state was selected, we're going to set the header to application JSON to see the JSON object. So very simple workflow. Uh, let's look at the technical implementation. Okay, we're back with the um, look at the technical details of the workflow. So as always, we have a GitHub repo, um, and the GitHub repository is synced with directive. So we can run a sync quick, just make sure that the latest and greatest is up there. And then let's look at the configuration. So in this directory, we've got the workflow in here, Terraform Gateway workflow, and also the gateway configuration. So in this case, the terraform.yaml is a configuration file to get imported into the API gateway. And very simply, what it does, it creates an endpoint called v1 terraform, which you can see up here. And we're going to take the contents of the request coming in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the inbound plugin. The inbound plugin copies all of the headers, query parameters, um, everything into the body of the JSON object that gets sent to this workflow, the target workflow. And this target workflow obviously resides in the demo workflow's namespace up here. And then lastly, as I explained in the article, the outbound plugin, well, it just sets headers. And it'll set the header based on the uh, query parameters come in. So obviously if we want to see init, plan and apply, we'd like to see the raw text output. And if we want to have state as the output, then we want a JSON object. So it'll then set the header to application JSON. And you can see it in here if you want to have a look at that. So on to the workflow. So as I explained previously, um, this workflow will run a HashiCorp Terraform container. And that's what we do up here. We instruct Directive to pull the latest HashiCorp Terraform image, um, fire it up as a medium-sized container, and then we're able to use it. Now, before we carry on into the workflow, I'm going to start this by sending it a Postman request. So internal directive, that same endpoint. But in this case, I want to have in it plan, apply, and state returned, so all of them. And I'm just going to send it a very simple provision of AWS machine in Terraform. So nothing crazy here. 
we're going to start it up and then we're going to have a look at the workflow. Right, so the workflow input that we received from this uh, from the API gateway has the Terraform script as a body object in Base64. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that script, convert it from Base64 into a plain text file and store it in Directive as a variable that we can use. So provision-aws.tf. You can name it anything. Um, but what we're also doing in this transform is we're taking the query parameters and copying it into an object called GW output because we want to be able to filter based on these query parameters coming in right at the end of the workflow. So first step, convert a script from Base64 into a text plane, store it, and create a new gateway object, gateway output object that has all the URL query parameters in it. Then we go on to the next state. And the next state, very simply, we decrypt some AWS keys and secrets. And then what we instruct Directive to do is to take that provision-aws.tf variable that we created, you know, the plain text file, and copy it as a file onto the working directory of this container that we're running. So the function Terraform defines that we're running this container. And then we're just going to send some commands into the container. So the init, the plan, and apply, the first three, obviously. Now, uh, I'm not a Terraform expert, but what happens at the end when the Terraform apply is created, it creates an uh, a file called terraform.state. Now, what we're doing in the very last command is we're copying this terraform.state file into a reserved directory that um, directive creates called out workflow terraform state. Out implies that when the work when the container is cleaned up, please take anything that's in out and create a workflow variable. So a variable that's available to all the other workflows called terraform state with the contents of the file called terraform state. Right, and this is just to clean up the output. And the next step we do is we send it on to the get tf state. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking that variable that we created and I'm adding the contents of that variable into the JSON object. So retrieve the Terraform state, put it in the JSON object, and then send it on to the next state, which is just going to return all the info. Now, this return state is a bit more complex, um, so that's why we use the JavaScript transform instead of the JQ transform. But essentially what I'm doing then is I'm taking the gateway output object, uh, sorry, JSON key, which contains either init, plan, apply, or TF state, remember the query parameters, and I'm telling the JavaScript just filter out, um, out of the large JSON object, whatever we didn't include in the original query parameter. So if we're only sending state as a, a query parameter in here, it will filter out the state. If it is the init, it'll only filter out init. And then what we do is we pass it back to our gateway config. So the gateway config will receive this JSON object. And like I said, the, the gateway object then just checks, you know, if it's init, plan, and apply, any of those three, we send back text plain because we want to see output. Or if it's the TF state only, please send it a JSON object. And if we're requesting all four of it, create this JSON object that has all of the details in here. So this is the output from that uh, workflow. Uh, well, that's actually the output from the gateway. So you can see apply, init, plan, and state. So if we then remove, let's say we only want to see the init output, and we send it on again, we'll get back to this now. So let's look at what this input actually looks like. So this was the original one where we said we would like to see all four. And you can see this is the input to directive workflow from the gateway. So it has the query parameters in a plan plier state, and then that script as a base64 object, which gets converted. And the output is obviously all of the details as JSON objects. And that's it. So what happens if we only send a very specific one, which we'll see now, we can look at what the input looks like for this one. 
that's our input only in it and the output will see as only the output uh, the in it output uh, I hope that makes sense uh, from this point forward uh, obviously this is an AWS event coming back in to notify us that the uh, VM has been created and what we will see in here is the init state only. That's it. Very simple workflow.